Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, we're a little bit late today. It's now 2.20. My name is Jessica Del Vecchio, and I'm the Economic Development Manager for the City of Boca Raton. And joining me today is Dana romanelli Shearer. She's the GM at Meisner Park. Uh, Dana, welcome. Thank you for having me. Excited to chat yes. today. Me too. Tell us a little bit about you, your role, um, how long you've been doing it. Absolutely. Um, so I am the general manager for Meisner Park Retail and Office. Um, it's a great mixed use property in downtown Boca. I've been here for about five years now and um, I love every day. It's, it's a challenge and fun and in sunny, you know, downtown Boca. Um, Meisner Park though is, is, as a whole is a mixed use property and kind of way before its time. Um, in 2021, the property will turn 30 years old. Um, so we're really excited about um, the kind of merchandising plan, development of the asset and where we're going. Uh, we have 270 plus rental apartments on the property, 176,000 square feet of office, including an office tower, as well as office plaza space and 150,000 square feet of retail. Um, and we also, you know, have such a great partnership with the city of Boca and the CRA. We are anchored by an amphitheater on our north end um, and on our south end, our um, CAC building, Cartoon Museum, it's been called a lot of different things over the years, um, has a 200 person black box theater. So um, we really feel like we provide such a great um, you know, opportunity for guests, visitors, workers, shoppers, diners to come out. Um, and we're just so happy to be reopened and um, welcome the community um, in a, a safe and thoughtful manner. So amazing. So I didn't realize you had so much office space there. What did you say? 176,000 square feet of space. Yeah. I definitely want to dive into that after we get into the basic um, information that we're going to discuss. Uh, when, for, full disclosure, when I first moved to Boca in 91, Meisner Park was one of the first places we went to and we couldn't believe there was outdoor dining and outdoor shopping. And we were from the Northeast. And honestly, it's not that long ago, 30 years ago, um, to see something like that was really, really to us something very new. And we were from, a, you know, the New York area. So it was really something I know nowadays it's kind of used as a model around the country. Uh, Definitely. I, I think that's where retail is headed, you know, that live workplace space. Um, and Tom Crocker, when he developed Meisner 30 years ago, I think had such a vision and it's it's a relevant vision today. Um, and, you know, our job really, um, you know, Brookfield Properties and Meisner Park um, and myself and my team is to execute that plan um, and, and provide the best space for guests to come in and whether they want to work, they want to live there, um, they want to play, they want to walk their dog, you want to go on a date night, um, you want to go to a concert at the amphitheater, you know, there's just so much um, opportunity for downtown Boca and Boca as a whole um, with Meisner Park there. And um, I know we'll get into it, but we have a lot of exciting um, new retail coming in um, and new dining options. So um, 2021 is going to be a great 30 year anniversary for us. It really is. It's going to be a great anniversary for all of us. Uh, so, yeah. So I wanted to get into some of the COVID related um, topics, kind of what you're seeing. Uh, are people coming out? T types of things that you're doing to have people feel safer returning out into the community? Absolutely. You know, at the at the onset of COVID and, and during kind of the government mandates and shutdowns, really um, Brookfield as a whole has been so supportive um, in, in kind of how we really evaluate and recover from this and, and how we support our tenants, both on the office side and the retail side. Um, together has really been the theme um, of everything that we do. So from a, a cleanliness and sanitation standpoint, um, we really focus on frequency, intensity, and focus of that cleaning of the common areas. So anything from addressing the elevators on a more frequent basis, adhering to all of the CDC guidelines, um, putting down signage, and really kind of being that communicator to the community of, um, of what is best practice for everybody as they are, they do get comfortable to come back out um, and visit the property and kind of get out there. Uh, we've added uh, sanitation stations throughout the property and um, they've been really well received. You know, my favorite thing to do is walk around the property and talk to guests and kind of gauge and see how they're feeling and, and what's going on. And, you know, Meisner is such kind of a gem, I always say, you know, it's such a historic site. And a lot of people, whether they are, you know, 
only here for six months out of the year or they've raised their kids here or they're back. They always have so many stories. And that's been the best part about getting back is they feel totally comfortable. And, you know, the outdoor atmosphere has really aided us um, in recovery and given us that ability. Um, but the focus is truly um, to provide a safe space for our community to come back to and, um, and really get comfortable again. Yeah, I think what we've been seeing is that people want to be and need to feel comfortable before they go out into the world. And I think that that applies to all of us, no matter what the business is. Um, have you seen a dip in the office space or anything like that through COVID? Was there an occupancy dip of any sort? So we did see a slight um, dip. We never went below 70% occupancy in our offices. Um, we saw a little bit of a change and a shift in maybe how many employees, and I'll use my, my right. office for instance, um, we're on an alternate schedule. So you're, you know, we're limiting and being very thoughtful in kind of that social distancing and that contact. So myself and my team, I'm working from home today, as you can probably see. Um, do and I think that's what a lot of our office partners have been doing is kind of that alternate schedule. Um, but we are back at 100% occupancy in our tower and in our plaza right now. Um, I still think, you know. The company's rolling out from a safety protocol standpoint, um, that alternate schedule. But um, I think everybody's excited to get back. We're touring. Yeah. Um, we're doing yeah. in-person tours, you know, in a very safe manner. Um, the broker that we work with, um, they're happy to be back on site and they're happy to be touring space. We have tours going on today. Um, so I think everybody has that kind of sentiment where it's, it was a nice break maybe to work from home. Um, but really excited <laughs> we're to get ready. Back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, we're think, ready. What better spot than Meisner Park? You can go down I and grab your totally Starbucks agree. or go to lunch or, you know, get your anniversary totally gift agree. or birthday gift. <laughs> so. Well, you really, you, Meisner Park, was true live, work, play before it was kind of you know, the thing to do, honestly. Uh, right. I've been to multiple offices there, whether they're financial wealth advisory firms um, and a couple of service firms over there. Um, in their office space, looking downstairs, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's very inviting. You see all the people down. This is obviously before COVID. I haven't been on any site tours myself right now. Um, but just being in their offices is an energy. You know, we spend most of our time in economic development in the Northwest Corridor. Park yeah. of Broken Sound, I love it. Brick, the Boca Raton Innovation Campus, love it. But being in the heart of Meisner Park, I mean, it really is something else. I mean, to if you have an option to work somewhere, that should certainly be on your radar. You said you had two tours today. Can you tell us the types of or companies, businesses, and where are they local? Are they coming from out of state? A little insight on that. Sure. Um, we're seeing a lot of wealth management out of the Northeast, actually, especially for our office tower. So we have kind of two separate products. Our office tower is going to be more of a traditional office space, um, you know, security, 8 to 6 p.m., kind of that lobby management. Um, once you get to the fourth floor in our office tower, a little tidbit here, you can see the ocean. So, nice. <laughs> you know, not terrible views there, um, but you can <laughs> see more of the legal services and um, financial, you know, wealth management there. And we are seeing a lot out of, out of the Northeast. Um, in our office plaza product, which is above the retail on the west side of the property, we're seeing more of the, the tech companies um, come out in, in, in transition, maybe from a space that's out west or maybe from another area, maybe from, you know, Miami or Broward um, or Martin County. And they just are kind of adjusting and, and coming here. And that product is going to be a little bit different. That's the view that you get of the plaza, which is a little bit more casual. Um, so that the tours we have today are actually local groups um, that are just relocating and love that that live, work, play um, kind of atmosphere that you can go downstairs and you can get grab your lunch or you can entertain clients and you can have a meeting while walking, you know, in the POA. And that's just yeah. such a nice advantage. Um, I tell a lot of my colleagues who are based in other areas, you know, when it's chilly down here and chilly is like 50 <laughs> Floridians, right? Um, you know, it's quiet. But it can be 100 in summer and it's very robust and you have everybody yeah. walking their dogs and, you know, grandkids and just kind of out there enjoying the beautiful weather. So that's really the advantage, I think, that the office product that we provide has. Plus, you have the residential side, which I know you don't manage, but that's another whole other thing where you can have people biking to the ocean and, and you know, spending the day. So it really is in the heart of, of downtown. Um, you had mentioned a recovery approach that you guys are taking. I know you touched upon it. Is, is there more that we should know uh, from that perspective? 
Sure. Um, you know, Brookfield as a whole has really given us the tools and the guidance to support our tenants. And that's not much different um, than the prior philosophy, I would say. That's really how we operate our business is to support our, our partners and drive their business um, from a landlord perspective. So, you know, during COVID, we spent a lot of our time talking to our businesses and understanding the challenges that they're facing. You know, what were you facing prior to COVID? What are you facing now? And what right. do you foresee facing in the future? Is it logistical issues? Is it traffic issues? Um, you know, what what are the challenges and how can we support you? Um, and, and what does that look like from a support standpoint? Um, you know, my leasing team and myself really have spent and dedicated a lot of time to those conversations and in supporting the recovery of our businesses, because that's truly from an economic standpoint, you know, yeah. their employees and their teams and their businesses, that's what's providing this great experience um, for Meisner Park as a whole. Without them, we can't provide this. Um, so it, it's been good. It's been very well received. Um, and I think, you know, appreciated. One of the things I would say is the city has been so helpful to us um, as we started kind of this recovery reopening process. Uh, we closed the road. So down Meisner Park, um, Plaza Real are kind of our, our main three ways there. We closed those to vehicular traffic to allow our restaurant partners who, who were impacted very severely, um, you know, amidst COVID, like so many businesses, to expand and socially distance. And I got some feedback from some of my restaurant partners that they were seeing similar numbers to last year. And that was really wow. encouraging to us to say, okay, you know, some of these, these measures that we're trying out and we're putting in place have been supporting the business and have been helping it to recover um, and to look forward to the future. So if someone is coming downtown, they're feeling safe, they're going to, ha to have dinner, um, anything we should know about Meisner Park? I, uh, is the valet stand, like, is there anything different? Is there something we should be? Sure, we're still, you know, we're still in kind of that, that rollout process. Um, all of us, we're all very, in that team, yeah. And being very thoughtful, you know, I think that's that's been one of the things that I've appreciated very much from a business standpoint is they've leaned on the local teams to say, what is right for your property? What is right mm -hmm. for your community? Um, so we are not operating valet just yet. Um, and that's been a Brookfield decision throughout their portfolio, just eliminating a touch point, right? I think we're all very oh, aware sense kind of, of the CDC guidelines and being very mindful of that. So we are not operating our valet. However, we do have four parking garages on the property that are free parking. Um, and the city has parallel parking that is still um, free to the public. So it's been very welcoming and inviting for the guests to come back and kind of regaining their comfort level, right? Maybe you're just coming, you're going to grab your Starbucks and you're going to walk and see right. how you feel. And that's been really nice, I think, um, as everybody kind of finds that new balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to find that balance between where everyone is comfortable and then we will trickle back to a new norm or the old norm eventually. We're just not sure when that will happen, obviously. Um, so let's get on to some of the really, like I get a lot of questions. I don't work downtown. We have a great downtown <laughs> manager, Ruby Childers. Um, she is boss lady. <laughs> but uh, from our perspective, when we have people, because we work corporate, we have a lot of people that come into town. Of course, we take them to Meisner Park. Obviously, it's one of the first stops after the um, after the tours of all the other things that they like to see from a corporate perspective. But um, what's coming in? What can we look forward to from either new tenants or tenants that are still opening? Uh, tell us what's what we can because everyone asks this question: What's coming <laughs> to Meisner Park? It's like the the best. I love it. Well, it's, it, I'm happy to share kind of what we have going on. Um, the property has definitely gone through an evolution, you know, being a 30 year old asset, there's definitely going to be changes that are needed to update and kind of bring in the best retail that we can, the best restaurant brands that we can. And our leasing team has been so thoughtful and so strategic over the last year to 18 months and going forward. Um, and it, it's so exciting. So one that is hot off the press, I actually just got approval um, yesterday to release was um, the corner space where True Lux used to be. We have an executed lease with American Social. Um, oh and we're so excited to bring that in. Yes. That's so, so awesome. I'm writing that down. <laughs> they I've have been location. to the other place. Yeah. On Las Olas, um, yep. on Brickell, in Tampa, yep. in Orlando. So we'll be their fifth location. And we're so excited to have the team wow. that, that operates American Social. They just they do such a stellar job. And I think the mix that they're going to bring to the property is just going to be mm -hmm. so, so well received, um, you know, from 
the food and the atmosphere yeah. that they provide is going to be great. So we're really it's excited. Such a cool vibe. We're excited. Yeah. I didn't. That's awesome to know. That's yeah, so that's super exciting. Um, right across from them, which was the previous junior space, is going to be a Mexican concept called Calaveras Cantina, and they are under construction. They have another location in Harborside in Jupiter, and we're so excited to bring them in. Another kind of local operator, super excited to get um, kind of ingrained in the community, and I think yeah. it's just going to be a great um, kind of lunch happy hour dining destination. I think they're going to serve multi-generational. You know, I have two little kids, so I'm always thinking, okay, is it yeah. date night or is it bring the family? Um, <laughs> and I think it's, it's, going to, it's going to serve both, which I think is right. going to be so great for the community, right? You can kind yeah. of pick and choose. Yeah. Um, a little bit further down that line, closest to the amphitheater, which was previously Uncle Julio's, we are yeah. under construction on a bowling alley. Um, the brand is called Strike 10. And this is another family owned local operator. So happy to bring them in. And this is going to be great. It's going to be 12 lanes, um, very heavy kind of bar cocktail lounge area. And we're so excited to have them come on board just from, from an entertainment standpoint, a dining standpoint, that's really what we provide to the community. I think it's, it's such a nice um, kind of mix. So it it's kind of have those so rare for our downtown. That's such a cool concept for downtown Boca and to have it right in Meisner park. I mean, that's a game changer. I mean, it oh, really is, time. you know, so we expect their um, Calaveras Cantina and Strike 10 are under construction. Um, we expect Strike 10 to open Q1 of 2021 and Calaveras okay. Q4 of this year, hopefully. Um, and it was great. I have to give kudos to the city throughout COVID um, helped us kind of through the permitting process and the inspection process. Everything mm -hmm. kept moving. And that's, I know yeah. that that was not the same throughout the country. So, um, you know, kudos to the building department and the city for, for keeping that active for our, for our folks that were trying to move things along. Yeah, that's a really good point, because I think a lot of times behind the scenes, it doesn't always get seen, but the building team didn't miss a beat. They really no. didn't. They were doing online. They were doing Zoom calls and all of that before any of us. You know, I was still trying to figure it out. <laughs> and they were they were doing inspections safely. They um, were. So it really is something that is we don't want to hold up business. If there's a way to do it safely, obviously, we want to be a good partner. And that, I think that's clear in this situation. It is. So I would what, say um, Oh, sorry. sorry to interrupt you, but I will no. say we had one retailer open um, about a week ago, Cialito Artisan Pops, which is a gourmet oh, popsicle nice. shop um, out of Wynwood. And they worked all through COVID, safely inspections, and they just opened a week ago. And it's just, it's amazing. If you have not bought, been in, no. you have to go in and get a popsicle. They're like works of art. I mean, they are just amazing. So, so I did see the photos on our downtown Boca social media. So where is their location? So their location is right next to Sur La Table on the north end of the property. Oh, I know it. Yes, of course. Excellent. Okay, so we'll check it out. Excellent. So is there anything else that we should be discussing as far as anything that you would like us to touch upon? Anything that we may have missed? I don't think so. You know, I just I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about Meisner and kind of what we're doing to to welcome guests back, because that's so important, I think, for all of us, you know, personally, professionally to get back to find that balance within our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we all quarantine and stayed home and um, are respectful of the CDC guidelines. But um, what we're doing really from our perspective is providing such a safe space so you can come back out and you can walk your dog and you can meet your girlfriends for lunch or you can go on a date night and you can feel really comfortable and you feel like we have done our part from a safety and sanitation standpoint. Um, and I'm really proud of that. So I'm excited to kind of get back to be that heartbeat of downtown because I truly believe that that's what we provide um, for downtown Boca. Yeah, you guys do a great job. I just hope I'm not missing anything. Um, I don't see any questions, which is crazy because we always get questions. Let me see if I'm on the right screen. Let's see. Just a couple hellos for us. No. Okay. I'm trying to think before we go because I know there's so much, so many questions about Meisner Park. I feel like I have to seize this opportunity with you. I feel like <laughs> well, my, you know. <laughs> email, my email is going across the bottom. So for anybody on that does have a specific question about Meisner Park, please reach out to me. That's, that's really the approach yeah. we take is we want to hear from the community. We want to talk to you. If you have a great idea or a great business concept, bring it forward to us. That That's what we're all about. And I think, you know, Post COVID for, for all of us, that's what we're all looking to do is yeah. really come together. We can do better together um, and, and collaborate. 
I totally agree. I mean, I thought it was great. Even the school board is wanting collaboration from the people in the community. I think it's very smart. We, like you said, Brookfield is going property to property and asking what the locals, you know, what the local landscape looks like. And that's just smart business. Agreed. Really okay, wonderful. So if there aren't any questions, uh, we guess we will leave the broadcast. And obviously, like you said, your information's on the bottom. So is ours. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to either one of us and we're happy to help. Thank you, Dana, so much for being here. Thank you, Jessica. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you.